Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Divyanka and I'm a doctor of pharmacy here in the US. On this channel, I supply both you and I with resources to live our best and most productive life. Today's video is another deep dive video in my pharma functional area deep dive series. I did an overview video of all the different functional areas a PharmD can enter in the pharmaceutical industry. And since that video, we've been doing different deep dives into each functional area to truly understand what each functional area does, the role of that department compared to the rest of the company, what it takes to be a part of that department, what the department is responsible for, why you should want to work in that department, etc. So in today's video, we are going over the functional area, H-E-O-R, or in long form, Health Economics and Outcomes Research. Based on the 2020-2021 IPHO PharmD Industry Fellowship Analysis Paper, there were 51 open fellowships in H-E-O-R and again, just like every other functional area within industry, the availability of fellowships within HEOR has gone up in the past many years. Now, I think HEOR is definitely one of those functional areas a lot of people don't hear about, or even if you've heard of HEOR, I think it's one of the least understood functional areas. As always, don't take any of my videos only for their face value. Put it together with your other research, other insight from professionals within the industry, etc. But for those of you who are trying to understand what HEOR is, what their role is within a company, and how you can be a helpful asset within HEOR, then I hope that within your research and your understanding, this video proves as a good and solid foundation. So, what is HEOR? Break it down, health economics and outcomes research. And together their role really is to help any decision maker within the healthcare industry make that decision. Now, one of the key factors to decision making within healthcare is of course the money aspect of it, and HEOR really helps on that side of things. They're helping clinicians, the government, payers, such as insurance companies, health ministries, patients, and everyone else who's involved in the healthcare process to, again, make educated and sound decisions. And HEOR strives to help those different decision makers make adequate comparisons and choose amongst the best available options. When we talk about the pharmaceutical industry, we always talk about how important it is to understand the drug development process. And of course, the science is the bread and butter of it. Without proving a drug is efficacious and safe for human use, you aren't going to be able to get the drug to market. So of course, the science is important. But I feel like HEOR kind of is that checks and balances. You need the science, the science needs to be sound and needs to make sense, but it also has to be coupled with all the correct decisions in terms of payment and general access for patients to actually make things work. So HEOR really serves as that balance between, okay, you know, we've looked at the science, everything is good, but what about the rest of the stuff? What about the money? What about the payers? What about actually getting patients access to this drug when it's on market, etc.? Things like that comes under HEOR, and again, you can probably tell that that part's really important. Overall, this is a relatively new and carved out department within pharma companies. And although that information has always been needed, I feel like HEOR has really become more modern and hot in the recent years. And I think that's because the value of the actual results you're getting from HEOR can really, again, help you as a company and help both the clinicians and the patients make those decisions based on data and other future projections. HEOR has advanced significantly in the last many decades, and I think it's only gonna get even more advanced. And again, that means you're gonna have more of a need for that talent and people within HEOR. Right now, many different reimbursement agencies globally ask for HEOR information for standard processes, but it's still not completely standardized across the board. The NIH or the National Institute for Health and the Clinical Excellence in the UK are just two examples of big organizations 
organizations and agencies that have adopted these HEOR methodologies as standard practice. But again, it's not a complete global movement and standardization just yet. So I think that there's a lot of movement that's going to happen in the future regarding HEOR and expertise within. When you're working in HEOR, it can involve a lot of different types of work. Basically, you're looking at a bunch of different data in a bunch of different ways. So some different aspects that you will look into and analyze within HEOR are real world evidence, drug pricing, understanding novel curative therapies, understanding overall healthcare spending, understanding and advising on universal healthcare coverage and access to that coverage. HOR also focuses on value-based alternative payment methods and models for patients who may not be able to pay the full amount, price transparency, digital technologies that come with analyses itself, understanding the aging population and how that information affects the company, the drug product, and the pricing, and bringing down the cost of personalized medicine. So of course, that falls under HEOR as well. So who can work in HEOR? So overall, as you guys can tell, there are many different aspects that HEOR really has to focus on to understand the big picture and the aspects outside of the science for a drug product. So overall, who can work in HEOR? I don't think there's any correct formula. Honestly, anyone with a good science background and business and economics background. So I can see that play out in many ways. You could be strong in the sciences and have an advanced degree. I still think PharmDs, MDs, and PhDs are of course valued within HEOR and pharma itself. So that is a great background to come in with. Now alongside that, if you have a minor in business or economics, or a master's degree in business or economic or some certification or some classes, that is something that's going to help bolster your knowledge on the other side of things to put together with your science and work in HEOR. Now, although an advanced degree is preferred, you still don't have to have an advanced degree to start out. So I think even if you are someone who has more of a business background, maybe a bachelor's in business or healthcare economics, micro macroeconomics, etc. I think basically any combination of those different science, business and economic skill sets can really prove to be a good background for someone wanting to get into HEOR. But okay, you can get into HEOR, great, but why would you want to work in HEOR? Now, first of all, like I mentioned, I think it's one of the most innovative and changing functional areas within the pharmaceutical industry. These analyses are more important than ever. It's important for us to understand where we're coming from and what the numbers project in terms of the future. That future looking analysis is incredibly valuable and important to a pharma company. So I think that this is really a changing landscape within pharma and if you're number savvy like looking at the economics and if you want to put it together with your science background to again make these products available to patients on a higher scale both from a price and access perspective and use all that background knowledge that goes into that then this is really for you you're really going to be analyzing a lot you have to understand both the business the numbers but also the clinical data and put all that together with your critical thinking and come up with solutions so I think that it's a really advanced and innovative space and honestly really interesting. So what does a career in terms of titles and where you can start off and where you can go within HEOR look like. Now, as you guys can tell, this is definitely more on the economics kind of consultant side of things. So those are the types of titles you guys will see more often within HEOR. So at a base, you can start out as a specialist, as an associate or as an analyst. And then from there, it'll go to senior and then possibly a consultant and then senior consultant. And then of course, manager, senior manager, etc. You can have a medical writer and different medical writer positions within HEOR because of course, that type of writing comes under medical writing as a blanket, but again, it's within the HEOR and economic space. Understanding how to write from that perspective is completely different from, let's just say, being a regulatory writer or a CMC writer or something else. Again, that special skill set comes with writing within HEOR. Within HEOR, you can also see other interesting titles such as engagement manager, business director, etc., things like that. But again, it really depends on company. Overall, I think if you're really interested in looking at the whole market landscape of drug products within different therapeutic areas, understanding where the company you work for really sits in that whole landscape, being able to analyze then data both from a safety, efficacy, science standpoint, and the number standpoint 
putting it all together to come up with future roadmaps and strategies based on that data is incredibly, incredibly interesting and important. And that's mainly what comes under HEOR. So if that's something that interests you, definitely do more research into HEOR to understand what it includes. And again, I think this is a great time to really be a part of HEOR. I really hope that overview of HOR was helpful. I hope you took away something from it. And if you guys are interested in pursuing HOR or are mildly interested in anything I said, again, do your part of the research and reach out to individuals who work in HOR to definitely learn more, understand why they like it so much, understand why they find it so important. And maybe HOR is right for you. And if it is, I of course wish you luck. But overall, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you guys have any follow-up questions, as always, feel free to email me or DM or comment below any and all of the above. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. The thumbs up really helps tell YouTube that this is an informative video and that others would benefit from seeing it. So if you guys think this video would be helpful to others, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Lastly, if you guys like the hoodie that I'm wearing, I have this in many other colors and designs on the Focus RX website. The link is down in the description bar below if you guys want to check it out. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. As always, I hope you guys learned something from today's video. That is it for today and as always you guys will see me in the next video. Mm -hmm.